On the show today, after nearly two years away from a Sprint Car National Tour, Sammy Swindell is back in a 410. We'll talk about that. Plus, High Limit is headed for the ditch. Sealands Grove allows dished wings uh, and much more today. Let's go. It's Tuesday, April 23rd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. If you want even more dirt racing content on top of the daily shows, the podcast, all the video stuff, check out our free email newsletter called The Slider. In the last two weeks, we've had a piece in there about lawnmower racing, plus interviews with sprint car driver Kyle Reinhardt and high limit announcer Chase Rodman. You can read past issues and sign up to get them delivered right to your inbox over at dirttracker.com slash the slider. The Kubota High Limit Sprint Cars are headed for Riverside International Speedway tonight for the second of 10 midweek championship series races. This Riverside date was postponed from a few weeks ago. It was originally supposed to be the midweek series opener. There shouldn't be any uh, weather issues tonight, though. Uh, let me go ahead and just knock on wood for everybody there. I had a question in the comments this week about High Limit points when it comes to these midweek championship races. Every event on the schedule this season is part of the season-long championship, but these midweek races also count towards that title. So a race like tonight counts for both championships. And the midweek deal has its own separate point fund, so this is effectively two championships in one all season with high limit. At the moment, Tyler Courtney leads the season-long deal over Brad Sweet, Brent Marks, Corey Day, and Jacob Allen. Those teams also occupy, uh, occupy the five guaranteed charter spots at the uh, moment. Remember, High Limit is going to give away those five charters at the end of the season to the top five teams in the standings. And then the midweek deal is being led by Corey Day after his win at Red Dirt last week. Uh, he's leading that right now over Tyler Courtney and Brent Marks. Riverside hasn't had big-time 410 racing since the World of Outlaws came through in 2018. That race was won by Darren Pittman. Brad Sweet, Rico Abreu were top five runners that night, so they could be drivers to watch today. Rico is still looking for his first high limit win of 2024, as is Brent Marks. The field tonight should be right around 40, and uh, here's that list that was released last night of everybody you can expect. Definitely plenty of local guys in on this one, and you'll have father and son in the field with both Landon and Tim Crawley entered. I think this will be the first time an outlaw driver is using a freebie this season with Landon coming into race. Uh, remember the World Racing Group or the World of Outlaws full timers under the World Racing Group rules uh, get four freebies outside of the outlaw schedule during the season. And besides the high limit regulars here, there are plenty of local and regional guys uh, coming into race, including Howard Moore, Derek Hagar, and Joe B. Miller. Hobstot Outlaw winner Brady Bacon is back with the wing on, and there is a name here we haven't seen in a 410 show in a while. 68-year-old Sammy Swindell is listed in Dale Howard's 47X, and I think this will be Sammy's first 410 appearance since 2022. He's been running mostly 360 stuff in the last year or two, and that includes a third place last Friday night at the Talladega Short Track with the USCS. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. actually won that race. Swindell has never appeared with High Limit, although his car owner, Dale Howard, was a feature starter with High Limit back at East Bay in February. Swindell's last touring 410 appearances included races with the Outlaws and All-Stars in 2022, with his uh, last coming at the Knoxville Nationals that season. Sammy's last Outlaw Top 10 finish was at Eldora in September of 2021, and his last touring Top 5 was with the All-Stars in 2018. He did win five times in 2023, including an ASCS regional competition with the USCS and Power Eye Regional. The Hall of Famer was also at the Chili Bowl back in January for the 34th time in his career. We'll see if we, uh, he can get into tonight's feature against what's going to be a really tough field. After tonight, we won't see High Limit again until next Wednesday at 81 Speedway. They are off this weekend, although I think you could see several teams venture to Knoxville for the Outlaw weekend. That is, if the weather plays nice at Knoxville. If you aren't headed for Riverside tonight, you can watch it live on Flow Racing. If you need a Flow subscription, click the link below in the video description on YouTube or any of the Flow Racing links over at dirttracker.com. That helps me out at no extra cost to you. Two sprint car schedule updates for you today. First, the NARC 410 sprint cars were supposed to be at the Stockton Dirt Track this weekend, but that event has been pushed back to May 19th. If you might remember back to a couple of weeks ago, the reconfigured Stockton caused a bunch of problems at the last NARC show, and track operator Tony Nassetti is working on fixes. Postponing this weekend's action gives him even more time to make those changes. We'll see NARC again on May 4th at the Tulare Thunderbolt. 
Also, the ASCS has made a couple of schedule changes for the summer, including shifting a trip to Montana. Now, the 360 tour will go to Dodge City August 16th, and then Lincoln County in Nebraska on the 17th. Following that will be Big Sky in Montana on August 23rd and 24th, and then Electric City Speedway on August 30th and 31st. You can find the full ASCS schedule over at ASCSRacing.com. Uh, did you guys see this deal at Sealands Grove from Sunday? They hosted a 410 sprint car show that was won by Austin Bishop. Through the course of that program, it was revealed that Sealands Grove is allowing dished wings on sprint cars, and two drivers took the opportunity to use them. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, uh, sprint car wings for things like the Word of Outlaws or Highland, like we were just talking about, the tops of them are flat. But in the past, in certain series, they allow actually a dished wing where instead of that, uh, that flat part uh, being flat, uh, the top part being flat, it's actually got a little bit of a curve to it. Uh, those two drivers that ran the dish wings at Sealands Grove were TJ Stutz and Devin Borden. But instead of this being a last minute change, Jeremy Elliott reported that this has apparently been in the rules at Sealands Grove for over a year, but nobody noticed. Hey guys, open up the rule book. Uh, no other area 410 tracks allow dished wings, and obviously the National Series don't allow them either. They are allowed to be used down in Australia, but not everyone chooses to run them there. At first, I thought this was in response to the Wickerbill stuff that's been going on, but if it's been in the rules as long as they say it has, then clearly it's not that. It wasn't a magic bullet as Stutz ran second and Borden 12th. Jeremy made the point today on his 90 at 9 over on the uh, Sprint Car Unlimited YouTube channel that the racers should have more options like this in terms of car setups. But wings are nearly $1,000 each. So are we not concerned about budgets and costs now? At some point, I'm going to need a racer to explain to me why they are okay spending a couple of grand on extra wings to be able to have dished as an option, or spend more money on tires if we open up the rule to include brands outside of Hoosier, but $600 for a fire bottle? That's too much? I've never seen anyone complain about the cost of titanium bolt kits and carbon fiber body pieces, but everyone certainly has those. And let me be clear, I'm not advocating against any of this. I don't care about dished wings or different tires. Whatever makes the racing good, I don't really care about. But don't complain about the cost to go racing and then be okay with all of this other stuff and having to buy all of these other things. Those two sides of this just don't jive. Uh, one other thing to come out of Sealands Grove on Sunday was Callum Williamson's first American Sprint Car Top 10. The Australian driver debuted in the John Trone 39 on Saturday at Lincoln, ending his day in the B main. But the team made a last minute decision to run Sunday at the Grove, uh, at Sealands Grove, and it paid off with a sixth place finish. Williamson will continue racing in PA over the next few weeks uh, with his first outlaw appearance scheduled for May 8th at Lincoln. He's going to spend a significant uh, amount of more time after that here racing sprint cars in the U.S. Uh, that's it for the Daily Show today. High Limit is the only action uh, or isn't the only action on today's dirt racing schedule. Make sure to stop by dirttracker.com slash watch tonight to see all of your streaming options. Uh, that does include weekly racing at Beaver Dam and Outlaw Carts at Millbridge. Hope you guys have a great Tuesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.